get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Live from the Sweet and Snack Show Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, here live at the Sweet and Snack Show, and we have tiny but mighty popcorn. And this is, show, Gene, show what it looks like, actually. It's actually a 300-year-old heirloom corn, and it was saved in a family. Three generations passed through the eldest son. And because it's small, when it pops, it cooks that outer hull, so you don't get the hulls in your teeth. So a lot of our... I love that. A lot of our customers also are people with diverticulitis, Crohn's, irritable bowel, and they can eat this one. Oh, so they love popcorn, but, but the normal one, this will pop so they don't get that, you know, it we gets have, stuck in the diverticulum. Right. We, we actually have several letters that have been written to us. People have found our corn, and they hadn't eaten popcorn in 10 years. Wow. They found our corn, and they're like, please do not stop growing this corn. It's the only one I can eat. And we have, we have a really good relationship direct with our customers because we're a small family farm. My wife's the CEO and I'm the janitor. So, I mean, and we have relationships with all of our customers. And uh, we just have a lot of fun growing it. So your background, though, you start off as a soil consultant. Yes, I, I actually was a soil consultant. I did a lot of work with farmers, um, you know, back in the... Uh, like the late 80s, early 90s, where they were trying to transition away from all the chemical use. At least, if not become organic, try to figure out how to use less pesticides, less herbicide, building the soils, helping the biological life, the, the life of the soil, and building the soil versus just spraying all the chemicals. Well, um, I had like 80 clients in five different states. My first customer was this guy that had this corn. And he was only getting... Where was he located? In Urbana, Iowa, only nine miles north of where I live. So you're in Iowa, too. Yeah, I'm just north of Cedar Rapids. Yeah, I played in baseball tournaments in Cedar Rapids, so I've been there. Yep, I have a t-shirt to prove it. All right. (laughs) Well, anytime you get back there, come to the farm. I for sure will. And and so anyway, um, he, he wanted to retire after I was working with him for five years. He was only getting 400 pounds when I originally started with him. Well, how was he selling it? Was he selling in the kernels, or was he well, popping it? Or what? What he was selling was only the kernels, Got it. and he had a here, yep, and kernels. and he had a few stores, a few high B stores, and a few fairway that he was directly marketing to, but then the business grew because his yields went from 400 pounds the acre because he hired you as a soil consultant, yep. <laughs> and we changed his fertility, we cut his nitrogen, we actually got the corn to go from 400 pounds the first year to a thousand. Wow. And he, could, he couldn't believe it. One of the things we did, his ears were not filling out to the tip. And I told him one of the things that's very important in tip fill in corn is boron. Because boron will keep the pollen viable longer because this ear pollinates from the butt out. Mm. And these last silks that come out, if there's no pollen left, then these tips. Yeah. That could be 10%, right? Oh, I mean, it was 10%. Yeah. And so we added boron, we changed his nitrogen, I did a whole bunch of... That's amazing. And he couldn't believe they were filling out to the tip. He said, if you can do that for me, fill that out to the tip, you will pay for my fertilizer. And we did it, and then he went, he was very happy. So after working five years, he wanted to retire. So (laughs) I was looking for another farmer that wanted to buy the corn, because I had a consult, I just wanted to do the consulting. It ended up, for a year, nobody wanted to buy the company because they're like, I'm not raising that stupid little corn. So I got to talking to my wife, and I said, honey, what if we were to buy? So she said, okay, you better go talk to him. And at the time, I was playing in a band with with Richard's son. And and he had... What do you play? I play drums. I play drums. Been doing it for 40 years. Anyway, um... I didn't want to step on their toes, you know, because the, 
but none of the boys wanted it. So finally, oh, I see. They, they had their own jobs they, they were doing. They didn't want to get into agriculture. So anyway, I finally got brave enough to go ask him if he'd sell the business to me. And I said, now, I don't want to step on your family, but would you be interested in selling it to me? And he looked right at me and he said, I wondered how long it was going to take you. Mm -hmm. So that's, I was going to be a rock and roll star and that's how I got in the <laughs> popcorn business. So what's the transition look like for something like that? For a transition? Yeah, tr like him transitioning the business to you. Um, you know what we did at the time in Iowa, it was, it was a really neat time because Iowa was promoting value-added agriculture and the organic movement was coming on, healthy foods, you know, that whole thing going on. They had a program in Iowa called the VABFAP program, value-added agriculture. I actually applied for a grant. We got a grant mm. that was a forgivable loan if we meet the criteria of the business plan in three years. And that's how I bought the company. Wow. We, we followed the plan, built the business up, and they forgave the loan. That's so the state, and now they got rid of that program in Iowa. <laughs> so where can people find it, Gene? We are nationwide with Whole Foods. In Iowa, High B, um, High B and Fairway stores. There's a we do a lot of mom and pop natural stores, um, and then we're also um, Wigman's was just here. They're looking at it. Um, we have a big mail order business. Um, you do. You, we can, what do you mean by the mail order business? Well, we have a website, and people yeah. go directly to us, or we sell through Amazon too. Yeah. So how do you get into Whole Foods from soil consultant to Whole Foods? Yeah. How long do you have? Now that, all day. Okay. <laughs> Here, here, this is, this is a, a neat story. Yeah. So when I bought the business, I knew about Whole Foods, and I thought Whole Foods, this would be great for them. It's a 300-year-old heirloom. It's grown naturally, no pesticides, none of that. So we put together a little package with the story that I just told you, right. and we put it in a box, and on the outside of the box, the little box, we put ancient contents open immediately and we sent it off to 11 Whole Foods regions. Who do you send it to? Then? Well, we went online and found all the regional the context, people, yeah, yeah, and we sent it out. And we got 11 of the nicest rejection letters that were all the same with a different signature at the bottom. So it kind of ticked me off. <laughs> so I called into Chicago to the Whole Foods store, and I got a hold of a guy at the Willowbrook Whole Foods. And I told him my story. And he said, you know what? He said, we just came from a meeting that said we should support more local farmers. So he said, tell you what, you send me three cases. There were 12 bags in a case. You send me three cases, I'm gonna put it on the shelf. I'm gonna mark it up. Whatever you send, I'm just gonna mark it up, our regular markup. I'm not gonna advertise it, I'm just gonna put it out. Yeah. And if it sells, I'll buy three more cases, and if it doesn't, you have to buy it back. Yeah, fair enough. I said, that's a deal. Yeah. So we sent the cases. I would go to that store, <laughs> stand in front of that bags. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it gets better. Okay. So I sent it, and about 10, 12 days later, he calls me up and he says, you need to send me three more cases. We sold out of it. And I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will come to your store. I will bring 10 cases. I will stand in your store until I sell five. Now there's 12 in a case. And then I'll leave you five, and in two weeks I'll come back and I'll do that again. Mm. He said, bring it on. So I got in that store. It was selling real well, so the grocery buyer goes, I told my buddy down at Gold Coast about you. He said, would you go down there and do that? Mm. I said, sure. So the Gold Coast guy said, you should go out to Evanston. <laughs> and, it, and it went boom, yeah, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And so my son and I and my wife, we would come into Chicago. We'd bring cases in. We'd go to the store, stand there and demo, drive all the way back to Iowa, come back in two weeks and do it again right. until we built the business so big I went yeah. to DPI, 
because I was driving to Chicago delivering popcorn. Right. I went to DPI and I walked in their store and I said, I have the best popcorn in the world and Whole Foods is selling it. Would you want to be my distributor? And the lady, Diane, she said, sure. And so I took a popper in, sat down in their break room, popped the popcorn, told them they, that people were coming in, eating it, and they go, we'll pick this up. Yeah. Now, I don't believe you can do that in the world today. Why not? The, mar the marketing and the way oh. all of it has changed. You can't really go to a directly to a store and do that now. I mean, you've got to go, and you understand. No, but the the methods behind getting in front of the people, hustling, and following up all applies. Well, yeah, I've done demos in every single Whole Foods in Chicago. Wow, that's what it takes. And it's kind of cool because when I come to town now and do them, they actually advertise. Farmer Gene is coming. To totally. Because we it's have kind of draw, yeah. We have a real good relationship. Whole Foods actually, they have a program, and I I I must say they they work with us fantastic. They have a program with a low interest rate loan to help you build your business, and they work directly with farmers. Mm. It's a great program. They actually gave us a low interest rate loan to increase our equipment, so that we could build the business, and now we're nationwide with them. Wow. Gene, this is absolutely fantastic. Anyone who doesn't buy this should feel ashamed of themselves. Uh, well, our, tiny but mighty popcorn. Our motto is we're not responsible for your addiction. Okay, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. And it's for all the PPE popcorn eaters. You know what that is? No. That's a professional popcorn eater. Is that, is that uh, uh, something? Is or, that an a, or an APP, an addictive popcorn personality. If you're either one of those and you eat this, you won't eat another one. So what's the website? Where can people go? Uh, TinyButMightyFoods.com awesome. or TinyButMightyPopcorn. Okay. TinyButMightyFoods or TinyButMightyPopcorn.com. Go there today. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.